Hello everyone and welcome to this new video about level design. In this episode, we're going to discuss an essential step of designing a game level, the whiteboxing, also known as greyboxing or blocking. A few weeks ago, we talked about the importance of mapping out your level, and we saw that having an overview of the 2D plan of your scene is crucial to building an interesting flow and creating a nice piece of gameplay for the players. But we also said that it was just the beginning, and that the next step was usually to go from 2D to 3D. That's the blocking phase that we're going to discuss today. In a nutshell, the whiteboxing stage is about setting up the overall layout of your level by placing large white cubes and platforms instead of the soon-to-be assets, and then playing through this rough sketch with all the game mechanics to get a feel for the final result. Because although drawing maps and charting the player's path on graphs is a good technique for identifying the core elements of your level, ultimately it's only by walking inside it and trying out its various features that you'll be able to know if the level really works. If your game pacing, user interactions, level signature elements, game mechanics and overall fun are already present with just those big white cubes, then chances are that it will only get better when you replace them with the real assets and the great graphics. Basically, with whiteboxing, the goal is twofold. First, you want to assess the right dimensions for the level. A big part of the blocking phase is to get an idea of how big or small the environment and the props are, compared to your player's avatar, and how it all translates into a specific atmosphere. Is this wall too high? Is a crate of this size blocking the view? Is this jump too long? This obviously means the placeholders you use have to be to scale, and then the assets you create to replace them will need to match these sizes, otherwise the whiteboxing step loses a lot of its value. The second objective of whiteboxing is to evaluate the feasibility of gameplay, to check all the mechanics work as intended and that the avatar evolves in the level in a natural way. Your white box level should contain all the elements that will impact the gameplay, typically all the important items the player will interact with to progress to the level, but it should not be bloated by environment props. Only what truly impacts the core experience should be shown at this stage. Blocking is also a perfect example of how good level designers benefit from iterative refinement. It is very rare to get your level perfect at the first attempt, in most cases, you'll plan something in your head or on your map, then test it out with whiteboxing and discover it has a few quirks and annoying issues. So you'll have to do another design iteration where you refine those specific areas and rework their layout to make them better. But as you can see, something really cool with whiteboxing is that it helps you quickly spot the parts to improve, because you'll be able to do your tests in situ and get very natural and organic feedbacks. To make the scale of the level more apparent, in addition to actually placing our character inside it, we also usually take advantage of specific materials that show a grid with marks every meter. And keep in mind that the point is not to slap ultra-realistic textures on your blocking elements. Ideally, it's better to stick with a neutral visual to be more objective and critical of whether the level feels good or not. You can use some colors here and there to indicate significant design elements, but your primary focus should remain the integration of game mechanics within the environment, and the preparation of a nice and fun chunk of scene for your players to live through. Note that of course, you can have some more polished assets here and there, if they are already ready, for example if they were created before for an other earlier level. But this stage should be the initial step in your level design process, and thus you should not be stuck awaiting for assets. And more importantly, because blocking is key to eliminating non-functional ideas and asset setups early on, it helps avoid useless asset creation and then heartbreaking binning. And with all that said, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick tips and techniques tutorial about level design, and that you now see why whiteboxing is crucial to designing a good level. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment with your own ideas for future level design tutorials. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.